The iconic Space Invaders on a two-line LCD. I'm running this on my Intel 8086 breadboard, where I've programmed the LCD display to have these little alien characters. This can be done on the standard two-line LCD, which you can buy on eBay for a few pounds. Here I'm using the LCD instruction, where we can create our own characters, and in this case, the little alien characters familiar from the arcade game Space Invaders. The LCD display contains some CG RAM, and in the CG RAM, it means we can alter those characters and create our own, just like we would if we were producing any little character of A, B, C, etc. I'll show you how the LCD display can add its own characters. And if I just power this off for a second, I'll take you through the steps and go into detail of how this is done. The LCD, as I say, contains onboard CG RAM, and the CG RAM has some default characters, and we could just alter those default characters to create new characters. And then just as we would display uh, an I or an A or a B or a C, we can use that. So I've just programmed this, it'll just start up. So this is just to say it's starting next. So it'll show CG RAM and it'll show the default characters that are in CG RAM that we can then alter. So here's the uh, uh, display of what we have at default value 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So those are just blocks. What we can do is then we can go back and modify those. So I'll modify the 0 location. So it's just being modified there. And the 1 location. So now I'm just modifying that and that gives us a little character. I'm not going to touch the ones at 2, 3, 4. So now just having modified those at, at 0 and 1. Now, as we would display N, E, and W, we can display the little characters for the alien. And here we're displaying what's stored in CG RAM at position zero and position one. And that's the little alien character. And then we can draw them onto the LCD and then start to move them. So they move across to the right and move back again. So I'll explain how we can set up the LCD instructions, how we can modify the CG RAM, what the, where the CG RAM is, and then how we can actually create our own little characters and then move them about. Now, I've done this on my uh, LCD, on my 8086 breadboard where I created a, a small computer with just some EEPROMs uh, programmed into that. But you don't necessarily need to have to use that. It's, it's all just the standard workings of the instructions within the LCD. Uh, and so you can watch along if you've got this LCD and want to write something similar. So how are these little characters created? Firstly, this is a feature of the LCD display. It's not specific to my 8086 and how I'm programming an assembler and writing to the display. So let's go back to how I wrote Hello World in my previous videos. Here I have the uh, blue LCD display I bought from eBay for a couple of quid. It's three signal lines uh, and it's actually identical to the yellow one. It's just the yellow is easier to see than the blue one. It's a 1602 LCD display and we can see the data lines here, uh, D0 to D7. If we revisit the uh, data sheet, here we have the signals. RS, RW and E. When RS is zero, it uses the instruction register and the data on the data line is seen as an instruction. When we change RS to one, it sees the data register and data on the data line is seen as a character. The E signal going high and low then initializes the data sitting on the data lines and actually that's when the characters were actually written or the instruction is actually run. But if we look at the examples that are given in the data sheet. Here, if we look at the example of writing H and writing I, here we can see we've got the read write signal, or the RS signal sitting as one, uh, the read write sitting as zero, and then we've got these eight data bits 0, 1, 0, 0, and 1, 0, 0, 0 on the D7 to D8. 
And here you'll see the difference between the H and the I is just this last bit. So it's actually going from, uh, so it's just changing from the H to the I by setting that. So as long as we set those, those uh, values on the data lines, it will see that on an H. When we change that last bit, it will see that as an I. Here in the data sheet, we can see the character H, I, and J, etc. These characters are held in the LCD ROM, and when we put in 0100, 1000 on the data lines, the corresponding character is retrieved from ROM and displayed on the little display. Here you can see it says upper four bits and lower four bits. And if we look at H, the upper four bits, 01000, and the lower four bits are 1000. I then changes that to a 1, and J then changes to 10 or 2, and K then changes to 1, 1 or 3. In fact, these are standard ASCII codes. So in any computer or any display, these binary values have been standardized. And that means that all across the world, in any computer or any display, if you then display the, the, the same binary value or in hex of 49, you will get I being displayed for A, J, etc. So 01001000 is displayed as H. Or you can see here, that's the equivalent of 4, 8 in hex. On the CD-ROM, screwing up, we can see the characters A to Z are made up of dots. But one significant thing is, we have some place where some characters can be written ourselves. So if we go back and look, you'll see here it says CG RAM. And if we look at the upper four bits of 0000 and the lower four bits of 0000, we can then display the CG RAM. So if we entered a character into the, those positions of one, two, three, four, five, six, etc., then we can actually display our own characters. And these are the CG RAM slots. So instead of having a code for H with the upper being 0100 and the lower being 100, if we use upper 0000 and lower 0000, it will display the character held here. And exactly the same, we played the upper four bits of zero and the next one is one, it will display the character in there. So we can actually get access to and, and have access to characters stored in there, just as we would pull out the H and just as we pull out the I, if we actually store the character in there, we can actually change that. If we look at our instruction set, here we have the values when we set the RS value to zero of clearing the display, setting the display on or off, doing the function set. And so when I coded these, I was actually passing in the values in binary to the data lines. So here, for instance, this value here says this is related to the display. This bit here um, is set to zero, which says display is off. This bit here is saying is the value C, which is C is zero, setting the cursor off. And this final value here is saying no blink. And so we are passing instructions in by setting the RS value to zero and then running these ones where I'm setting display off, clearing the display, and then setting the entry mode set. And similarly, if we look here, there is an instruction to set the CG RAM address. So if we set this bit and then set these values to the address, we can actually write or the, the value to a CG RAM. So where we have these characters and we were putting the values into uh, display H, I, and J, we have these values of CG RAM. And if we go back to the instruction, if we run that instruction, we can actually make changes to the uh, the value in CG RAM. There is a default value in there, which is just all bars, but we can change that ourselves. So if we go to here, you can see that this character here is made up by putting in ones and zeros. And here I've actually gone and filled one in on our Excel sheet. So here, as you'll go back to the, um, if we just go back quickly, sorry, to the, the sheet, you'll see here, this is made up of uh, eight lines 
and five positions. So one, two, three, four, five, and then there's eight lines. And so each one of the characters, HIJ, etc., etc., all these characters are all made up from little dots. And they all are constructed by these lines here, eight lines, and then various positions. So if we could actually write using that instruction of setting the CGRAM address, we could actually change the value to whatever we wanted CGRAM. And then whenever we want to see that value, just simply call it by going back and putting in the 000 and the 00. And whatever value we've then put in there, whatever character we can then retrieve. So here I've actually put uh, some value in, if we look at the Excel spreadsheet, and here I have um, eight lines and the various values. If I only, we're only gonna look at the, the, the first five of these, but if I was able to set just like I did here, where I'm putting in an instruction and putting in the values um, well, of that binary value, if we then could put in these binary values, we can actually alter the character in there by using that set CGM uh, CG RAM uh, instruction. So here, if we put in this one zero zero and here one zero, now it's hard to see what those are, but let's say if I copy that, paste that into here, and where we have zeros, I'll just clear those out. Um, those ones there, I'll just clear out as well. And let's fill these ones in with a black so if we were setting one, it sets a pixel. So if we go and fill in each one of these ones with a, a, a black pixel. So where it's one, it's basically saying, switch the pixel on. And where it's uh, zero, it's saying, don't switch the pixel on, just leave it. You start to form a little character. You can create a little character. So if I fill the rest of these in, So that's what that pattern is. It's saying for every one, highlight that pixel, and for a zero, don't put anything in. Now, it's hard to see that, but maybe if I zoom out. You might be able to see that sort of little character that we're, we're forming here, or it might be easier to see it if we go to sheet two. We're basically we're using two characters so we're actually making one character there one character the other side and if we view that and zoom out on that to say 25 you'll see it's starting to form the little alien character so actually the alien character is made up of two so if we were able to go back and on the cg ram set that value using this uh, cg ram to actually change that value in cg ram by by adding in those data lines. So again, putting in these values for each one, we can actually write the little character, store it into that position on our, uh, in our, in our uh, CG RAM. And then later on, we can call back that uh, value from CG RAM, just as we would call back the character. And all we would need to do is just as we put in for H with the top upper four bits setting to one zero one zero zero, and for the lower bits um, going one zero zero zero. If we just put in zero zero zero, we could display that character we just created, and then that one we can create that one, and that's how it's done. So what we're going to do is exactly that. We will uh, write the uh, use that instruction to set the CG RAM address. And then line by line, we'll actually enter in those values that we've set to make that little character of 00010. So, and then by doing that, we could create that little character, save it in the value, and then later on display it. So here you can see exactly that. I'm just displaying the values that are actually stored in CG RAM at location zero, and then one, two, three, etc. And then I'm going to issue the command to write to CG RAM. I'm going to modify that 
first value and modify the second entry. And here it is doing the second one now. And you can see it's just putting in those values. Now we'll look at how I did that, how I put the new and then displayed the CG RAM values and then how I went ahead and modified the CG RAM. So here's the bit of code. Now here's the one that puts out CG RAM. So instead of putting in as I did before with this, where I'm putting in, put in N, put in G, uh, put in the dot, etc. What I'm doing here is I'm actually putting the code for C, G. Now I could have equally put in C, G, R, but I just wanted to show you how all it's doing there is it's using that binary value to display this value C. It's using that binary value to do the G, that binary value for R, A, M, and then it's actually, I've actually used a space there rather than actually the binary value, so you can see that. Well, this is just a little wait. Uh, I just was a little loop here to, to wait. And then here's where it's actually displaying the CG RAM value 1, 2, 3 that you saw that was being displayed on the screen. So as you can see there, that's the zeros that we were saying before. When we went back to here, you saw that if the lower bits are 0 and the upper bits are 0, it displays this value. And then it goes through one. So that's exactly what that code is doing there. It's displaying, it's putting in that value of all zeros, which is the value at one. It's then displaying the value at one, and then the value at one zero, just exactly as it's saying on here. How we do it, one zero, one one, etc. And that's why you saw on the little screen before, you saw it displaying the CG RAM. Then it's doing a little wait, and then it displays the one that's in zero, which, and as you can see, those are all default blocks. Then I'm just waiting a while before we go around then and start to do the instruction for writing to CG RAM. And here um, I'm actually setting up to do the instruction, and how I've done that is change the RS port. So in this one here, when I'm talking to RS, it's setting the value of RS to one because I've got that value there connected to the RS line on the L. -L LCD display. Whereas this, when I'm setting zero, that's setting the RS value to zero. So that's why it's using the instruction just as we did up here when we were setting any of the instructions like function set clear display. So that's exactly what it's doing. It's just sending that instruction to write the CG RAM. This one here. And it then modifies the character writing that value in. And these are the values I showed you before when we went into the Excel spreadsheet. I'm zero, zero, zero. There's one, zero, zero. Next one is one, zero. So you'll see there, one, zero, zero, one, zero. So it literally is then just using the RS set to one. So it first of all sets the instruction with RS set to zero to say we're going to write to CG RAM, and then it sets RS to one. And just like we were writing the characters up here of uh, CG RAM, it's just uh, writing, modifying the value. And it's doing the first line, the second line, third line, fourth line, fifth line. So there you go. So row one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it's modifying that. Then I have a small delay before I go on. It just to so you can see it on the display that, that that delay is just to to make it easier. So you can see the difference between the first and the second. And that's why you saw the sort of pause before it went under the second. And then it goes on and modifies the second character. So it's basically writing the value uh, of one zero zero etc., which gives us that second character. And that's all there is to it. It then finishes writing the character, clears the display. And, and so that's all we have to do. So now, whenever we want to go and display the value, all we're having to do now is set the entry mode set to display on. It's then doing the new, which you saw. And in this case, I'm actually using the actual letters rather than trying to use the digital value because it's easier to see that. There's a little wait. And then all it's doing is saying, right, just the same way we displayed the, the characters before, um, where we put in the values, you're putting in, if you put in the values all zeros, that displays the value that's stored at CG RAM 1. And if you put in the value 0, zero 1, that displays the value that's stored at CG RAM 2, uh, the, the second position. So that's all there is to it. You modify the character by setting the uh, instruction to CG RAM, right to CG RAM, just as we did here. This set this instruction. It then modifies it by putting those values in, and we know we have to do eight rows, five characters. 
and here then during the, the next eight rows for the next one and that's then it's stored in that value so then we change the instruction to say uh, we're not doing the uh, write to CG RAM so that's why what I'm doing here then I'm saying okay finish writing the character stop and clear the display and then I've just got a little loop just to wait and then eventually we go on back to saying uh, do the entry mode set but, uh, then I'm displaying the N E W and the space it's just doing a little loop here where it's just waiting and then it says right display the values and that's why you see in the new it displays the two values and that's it now as we would display N E and W we can display the little characters for the alien and here we're displaying what's stored in CG RAM at position 0 and position 1 and that's the little alien character now all of this is totally independent from what language you're writing or what what how you're actually coding this whether you're doing this for a different microprocessor or whatever um, all you're actually doing is is running that instruction to write the CG RAM just as you would do the instruction for clearing the display etc so it's totally independent of what you're doing I specifically have been writing this code for my 8086 microprocessor on a breadboard uh, where I wanted to write hello world and then I just been going on to write more assembler ASM86 so all of this is code that's written in um, ASM86 but it's exactly the same principle you write the instruction you modify each one of the of the rows just as we had there where you're basically saying a zero will not light the uh, pixel but a one will light the pixel and that's how you're modifying it and as you can see there's eight lines there which corresponds to the eight rows there that we're actually modifying and then we go on to modify the second one and then we're not, now you've actually modified the value stored in value zero here and the value one then you can actually then just call those values up to display it just like exactly the same as if you were displaying the character of course I've written this all in um, ASM86 and, and probably one of the things you won't have seen is these little loops I've provided and the loops are just really to provide a bit of delay so that's why you see when it's it, it starts up starting and then there's a bit of a wait that's exactly what my loop is doing there or what this little, little loop is doing and that's why you've got this label here w loop one and w loop one where it's referencing it and down here we have w loop two and w loop two so that's why all these uh, assembler instructions are actually sitting indented because that will allows the compiler to distinguish between what's an instruction and what's a label so all this is is just a label and how this works is all I'm doing is moving the value of 6 into the register BL there's a couple of no op instructions so it, it means that the processor has a couple of delays while it runs at nothing and nothing and nothing and then what it does is it decrements the value in BL which was 6 so it'll be 5 it then does a jump not 0 no it's not 0 so because it's not zero it jumps back up it then goes to no up no up no up decrements now because it was five it goes to four it, is it zero no so it jumps back up so it keeps going around that loop uh, four three and then eventually gets down to decrement bl and it gets to zero and it says jump not zero no it is zero so it falls on through and starts going on to ex execute all the rest of the instructions and here I have the wait um, just after I put in the CG RAM where we display the characters and it's exactly the same I'm just dumping value of 6 into the register BL it then decrements BL and goes round until it eventually gets to this jump not 0 and if it isn't 0 it jumps up to here and runs through and eventually what happens is it gets to 0 and it goes on through and displays here it's just a shorter delay because I put 4 in so it only goes round that loop 4 times and that's the difference from the, uh, between what I've been doing in my previous videos where I hadn't showed you this sort of looping um, uh, so that's all that's the difference I've changed on these uh, once I've built all of that obviously I then just go and uh, compile that using NASM as my compiler and that creates me the binary file and then I can load the binary file into the two EEPROMs and that's how it then displays the uh, the values that you saw there where it's going starting doing the CG RAM and eventually then it obviously then goes down to display the characters and here what we're actually doing is this is where we're actually displaying the characters 
but actually making them move to the right and to the left. And I'll go through that next. And then we can draw them onto the LCD and then start to move them. So they move across to the right and move back again. How am I giving the illusion of the characters moving to the right? It is a kind of illusion because I'm using a feature of the LCD display. Um, and whenever you're writing anything to the display, hello world, as you add the characters to the screen, the LCD screen has to then display those characters. So if we could somehow put a space in front, a space is a character, but of course, when you see a space, you don't see that, it's just a space. And that's exactly how we're doing it. I'm just putting spaces in, in front of the little character and the LCD display then move, gives the illusion of moving the character to the right because I'm putting spaces in front. So we just saw in the little video before um, where it's displaying the characters onto the screen. So here's what, what I'm doing there and by adding a space, a space, and then I'm putting out the character in CG RAM, which is called by putting in the zeros. And then the second part is called by zero, zero, and the one, because those are the two characters in the CG RAM that we've modified. And then to move them across, all I do is add some spaces in front. So as I add the spaces in front, it moves the characters to the right. Now, what we have to do is we have to uh, do some setup before we actually do that. So we need to set the entry mode to shift. So we just call the instruction and we're setting the RS value then to zero. Uh, and so we're calling this instruction the entry mode set saying the ID is zero, decrement and S equals one. Now usually before we've got S equals to zero, but that entry mode set, which is just one of the commands here, entry mode set, and it sets the cursor move direction. And that is then setting it up to say, we're going to shift and we're going to decrement. What we then do is we call this um, instruction, which is return home, which is this one here. And what that does is it moves the cursor from where we've just added the two characters. It moves the cursor right back to the beginning. So it moves back to the start. And then when we add in our spaces, it starts to move them across. So here we call that return home. So that makes the cursor move to the start of the display. And then as we add in spaces, it, the characters move across to the right. And all I'm doing there is adding a space, adding another space, adding another space, adding another space, just as we'd add a character, set it to space. Um, I was displaying the cursor before, so I'm hiding that cursor as well. So that's why I'm actually calling this little piece here where I'm basically saying put the display on, but turn the cursor off and don't blink it before you could see the cursor sitting there. But I don't want the cursor moving across because you can then see where the cursor is actually going. So that hides the cursor. And then when we want to uh, now decrement, we, we change it where we set the ID equals to one to increment and we set the shift equals one. So that's the entry mode set. And we're just setting these bits instead. Whereas before we had the bit set up here to say it was decrement and all that's what we're doing we're still using in the shift but we're incrementing and decrementing and that allows the uh, characters to move to the right and to the left and then just adding spaces and so it's moved all the way to the left and need to move them back to the right so we change the entry mode set where we set the ID equal zero to decrement we still leave the, the shift set and then we just add spaces again and as we add spaces the system, because we're using this entry mode set and setting decrement and increment, allows the character to move across to the right and move across to the left. Um, when I've done that, I then just jump back up. So this jump takes me all the way back up to the label here, full right, and it just goes through and repeats. So it moves all the way across just by adding spaces. And then when it's gone all the way to the, to the left, we need to move them right. We change this entry mode set where we set to decrement and we add spaces in again where we, we've changed the character, the uh, cursor back to the start. We add then the spaces and then it jumps all the way back up again. So that's how you get them to move across and move back and move across, and move back. And that's all there is to it, really. Now, one of the reasons this does work is because um, I'm obviously not running the clock at the full speed. I'm using that uh, 
555 timer, and I'm not using an 8086. Uh, the 8086 requires a 1 megahertz uh, clock speed. And obviously I'm using a slower clock speed, so I'm using the ADC86. The ADC86 is identical to the 8086, but it allows the U to run a slower clock speed. And because I'm running a slower clock speed, that's why you see it going, going across bit by bit, because the clock speed is, is running slow, so the clock um, signals that are being sent in are quite slow, and that's why you see it going across. I do have to add in uh, some spaces, or some delays, sorry. Um, where I'm putting in some delays to, to, to sort of wait for a little time. But because the clock is running quite slow, that's why you see the character being displayed. And that's why when it starts and you're seeing starting, it's not immediately displaying starting. If I run the uh, 8086 at the full clock speed, you wouldn't see it going S-T-A-R-T as it's, as it's being displayed. You just see it's starting straight away. Um, so it is a bit of a lose because I'm running at a slower clock speed and specifically on the 8086C or the 80C86 uh, um, chip. So that's how we move the aliens. And thank you very much for subscribing and liking this little video. Thank you.